Hi everyone! So today we're going to be taking a look at some of the mixes that manganese violet could make. This pigment is made with PV16 and the one I'll be using today is this one by Rembrandt. As you can see, manganese violet. And back here it says made with PV16. Okay, so I've actually squeezed this into this half pan a long time ago. And as you can see, I have used like quite a bit. It's, is it, has it hit pan? No, not yet. It hasn't hit pan yet, but I've, I've used a significant amount of it. And it's a red violet that granulates. I love any granulating violets. So this one is also one that I really like. I want to quickly mention a few things before we get started with the swatching and the mixes. So as per usual, I'll be using this palette of mine, my upgraded Sonnet White Knights palette. I have a video swatching this palette, so I'll leave a link down below if you'd like to see me swatch all the colors in this palette. I actually lost the sheet of paper that I swatched on that one, so this one is the one I use to refer to the colors in this palette. And the paper that we're using today is still Baohong 100% cotton artist grade watercolor paper. And the brush I'll be using today is Rosemary's Red Dot Collection. I believe this is called their mop brush. And this is size 10-0. I, I like quills that are like this size, so that's why I have a lot of quills. You're gonna see that I use different brushes in different videos because I'm trying to like, you know, experiment with them, test them out, and hopefully I'll be able to compare those brushes at the end of the year, possibly. We'll see how well I do with them. But yeah, so far I've really liked all of the brushes that I've been using. Anyway, let's get started. All right, let's swatch out the color first. So I put some water in here already so it would reactivate quickly. Here we go. So as you can see, it is a tiny bit um, not completely transparent. So I'd say it's semi-transparent. And it is a red-violet. That granulates beautifully, might I add. I'll put some more pigment on. Okay. We're not going to be able to see the granulation right away, but hopefully when it dries, it'll become more clear. Okay, the first color I'm using is this pigment PR170 colon 1 which in their range is called Carmine and I want to say this one isn't dull at all it's very bright and quite vibrant it has a pink undertone so it's very much similar to your typical quinacridone rose quinacridone red PV19 um, it's obviously more on the what do you call it? The, the redder end of the PV19 spectrum. Let me see if I could add some more. Okay. And then we have manganese violet. I think this would be this this mixture would probably be really nice for florals. Let's see. Ooh. Oh no, it's mixing in there. Sorry about that. And hopefully when these dry, the granulation would come through. So beautiful already. I love that. Sorry about that mess right there. I'll try to do better. <laughs> okay, next up we have 242, which is geranium red, I believe. And this one is your typical warm red. So it's an orange leaning red. If you have PR255 at home, this one really resembles that. Or like vermilion, any vermilion color. 
That's what it's most similar to. And I believe handprint.com also says that manganese violet mixes well with oranges, yellows and oranges, I believe. What are we getting here? This is quite a nice, what do you call this? Like a dusky sunset. That's quite beautiful. I'm not seeing a lot of differences between these apart from that this one is obviously cooler and this is warmer, but all in all, it gives similar mixes. Okay, next up we have Quin Gold, but this isn't Quin Gold Quin Gold, as I've previously mentioned in previous videos. This one is White Knight's um, Indian Gold, but I'm using this as like an example of a warm yellow or Quin Gold hues. So if you have a warm yellow at home, then this one would be similar to that. And I think a lot of people do have... Oh, wow, that's like a raw umber. And then here you get like a raw sienna. Oh, that's so beautiful. Oh, I love that. Okay, so if you mix manganese violet with this like warm yellow queen gold type of thing, you could get pretty nice browns or like yellow earths. Oh, I really like that one. Hmm. It's it's not really a raw umber. I think it's between a raw umber and a burnt umber. A, like a light burnt umber and a dark raw umber, if that makes sense. Okay, next up we have PY3. And this one will be um, the substitute well, not substitute, but like, you know, your lemon yellow, your typical lemon yellow. And I think these, these colors are probably colors that many of you should have at home. Not should have, but like should already have as I feel like a lot of us watercolor beginners go through these pigments or or type of colors so even if you don't have py3 you might have colors like oh sorry oh that's very nice i quite like that look at that lovely so yeah if you don't have py3 you might have py175 py 184 any sort of lemon yellow would work and would give similar mixes to these hmm i'm looking at these two rows right now and it doesn't seem like there's a lot of difference this pale one has a clear difference if you want more natural looking browns i suggest going with the warmer yellow this quin gold row but if you prefer like more interesting browns that might not look as natural, then go with this lemon yellow mixture. Okay, next up we have PG7 Thalo Green Blue Shade. I'll move this up a bit. I wonder if this will give a black. Purple and green does not. What does purple and green make? They're both secondary colors. Let's see. I'm I'm quite I'm quite interested in how this will turn out. Since thalo is a dark strong tinting color, I'm using more pigment here. Oh, whoa! Whoa! Okay, guys, I love that. 
I so love that. Oh my goodness. Okay, that's like a semi-transparent cobalt, like a dark cobalt turquoise color. Oh, I really love that. These, these look like, oh my goodness, can you, can you see? Can you see that? That looks like a dark cobalt turquoise color. It gives you these like sort of darker violets in these mixes, but like, Okay, so if you mix phthalo green with this manganese violet, then you get sort of like a turquoisey mixture, depending on how much you mix between the two. Oh, I love that! Okay, let's move on to PB28, and this is their cobalt turquoise. The color is more like a cobalt teal color. This color, you know? You know what I mean? I chose to add this color as a mix today because I think a lot of you might have this color at home and I don't know, personally I feel like anything that mixes with this cobalt tealy, cobalt turquoise color just is like magic. It's so vibrant and I don't know, okay let's see, what, what is this gonna mix? Oh! Oh, you know what? This actually reminds me of like something like a misty morning. Actually, I don't have misty morning from Roman Small, so I can't, I shouldn't comment on that, but that's how I feel. Oh, I really love that. It gives you like soft, more blue violets, and then this, this is turning more into sort of like a cerulean blue chromium. And then this is watered down. Hopefully there's going to be some granulation or separation happen there. We'll see after it dries. Next up we have PB15, which is the little blue. Okay, so phthalo blue and manganese violet. Let's predict. I feel like there's not going to be any surprises because it's just blue and, and a violet. It's probably going to lean more towards blue. Shouldn't be much of a surprise there. Yeah, it just gives you more... It, it, if you mix it like this, it sort of becomes like a... Almost like an, a light version of Indian Throne Blue, PB60. So that's very interesting. I guess if you if you've always wanted a PB60 that granulates into like quite interesting mixtures, then maybe try this mix. Next up we have PB29 Ultramarine Blue. Again, this one probably isn't going to be surprising because it's just a blue and a violet. Probably just going to lean more blue. But this is warmer and it granulates. So two granulating colors. I bet Schminke already has this mix as some glacier color or something. Yeah, this is nice. Just a nice blue-violet mix. You're not able to get as inky of a color as the phthalo blue, but it is a warmer color, so depends on what you're after. And then next up, oh okay, these last two, this first one here is PBR7 and I'm going to be using Burnt Sienna. And the bottom one is PO48, which is Quin Burnt Orange. And I think the one I have is Daniel Smith's. And I'll be using that from a different palette, but this Burnt Sienna PBR7 one is still the same palette. Okay, so the reason I chose these last two 
last two colors down here is because I think I read somewhere someone said something about like manganese violet mixing making beautiful mixtures with dark oranges I don't personally like orange colors but I do use earth colors so I I decided to use a burnt sienna instead because that one I think everyone should have or should probably already have at home hmm what what sort of mix is this hmm I can't quite tell what sort of mix is that I guess it's it's just like it's still burnt sienna but it leans more sort of like leans more towards potter's pink type of thing mm, i'm not sold on that okay next up will be p048 from my western palette and yes this is daniel smith's And the reason I chose this one is because it's it's quite similar to Burnt Sienna, but it's transparent, and it also leans more orange. So hopefully we we could get sort of a different mixture. Hopefully. Oh, okay. So we're getting some darker mixes. Possibly because of its strong tint. Hmm. I think I think it would be better if you used a more vibrant mix. Actually, that that one that one's looking as it dries. It, it's starting to look more like Caput Mortem. A very light version of Caput Mortem. But yeah, these these look sort of like a walnut-y color. I quite like that. All right, I'm thinking that it'll look better once it dries, so let's wait for it to dry and then we'll be right back. All right, I'm back. The swatches have completely dried. Let's take a look, shall we? So here it is in this orientation for those of you who want to see all of them together. But let's take a look. Let's take a closer look at all of these. So as you can see, I'm not sure if it's coming through in the camera, but this seems pretty black, but in reality, it doesn't look black, okay? It's just very opaque. So yeah, it's, it's probably something around there. And you can see there's beautiful, beautiful granulation happening. Lovely. So with these first two mixes, as you can see, one one is definitely cooler and this is just warmer i think with the cooler one it just sort of makes the manganese violet just you know like more red more pink but this one you could clearly see like the orange warm red at the back and then some of the purple violet granulation showing through that's so pretty okay and then with these two yellows we have these mixes and I will say that this one hardly looks like there's any purple at all but over here I could definitely see some violet purple going on so it does look pretty nice if you want interesting brown colors or earthy brown colors in your landscape paintings I think maybe these two mixes as in like yellows warm yellows and cool yellows would be quite interesting if you're not looking for like a flat brown and then now we have these two pg7 and pb28 well this one doesn't really look the same but this one gives you like these beautiful cobalt turquoisey colors and like with this one i'm seeing a lot of like this actually reminds me of van gogh's turquoise green 
where it's like a green um, a green wash in the back with some blue granulation but yeah like look at that that's so beautiful okay and then with this cobalt turquoise one you get really nice like misty blues and these are really interesting mixes like I really like this one because you could really see like the color separation like that's so beautiful Oh, I can't help but look at this one. This one's beautiful too. I think that one's with the thalo mixture. Yeah, thalo blue. And you could get these like really dark indenthrone indenthrone blue e colors, but with more of a depth or dimension to it. Like, I think that would be really nice for galaxies, some sort of like, you know, outer space skies and like th the color separation in that, that's insane. I guess with the ultramarine blue as well, it'll really depend on how much of like the two colors you mix and also how much water you put in. Obviously these ones with more water, like the more diluted mixes, then you get more of a separation and you could see the granulation more. These are just tiny swatches, but you could still see how they show up. So if you do larger washes, they're just gonna be so beautiful. And then now these last two, we have the Burnt Sienna and Quinn Burnt Orange. Beautiful mixes. I wouldn't say there's much of a difference, but if you want to see more of the granulation come through, I think the Quinn Burnt Orange would be very appropriate for this because the Quinn Burnt Orange serves sort of like a background base color while the, the Manganese Violet granulates. And if you don't have this color, maybe something like a PR101 transparent red oxide or something would work. And those are all the mixes we have for today. I think my favorite mixes out of these would have to be these two right here. You know I love my turquoises and like this this so misty misty gray it, it does it's not even gray but like i feel like it's like one of those beautiful magical it's like a fog you know like last time i said unicorn poop this time i'm gonna say unicorn cloud of some sort but like yeah i really love these two the rest are, are pretty okay too, but these have to be my, my most favorite out of the mixes today. Which one was your favorite? I think this one is pretty nice too, but it's too predictable, you know? So yeah, that's all I have to show for today. As always, thank you so much for watching everyone. Don't forget to drink lots of water and stay hydrated.